Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. A kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles all, the flat, unraised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wooden O the very casks that did affright the air at Agincourt? Oh, pardon, since a crooked figure may attest in little place a million, and let us, ciphers to this great account, on your imaginary forces work. Suppose within the girdle of these walls are now confined two mighty monarchies, whose high up reared and abutting fronts the perilous narrow ocean parts asunder. Peace out our imperfections with your thoughts. Into a thousand parts divide one man and make imaginary puissance. Think, when we talk of horses, that you see them printing their proud hoofs in the receiving earth. For tis your thoughts that now must deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping o'er times, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass. For the which supply, admit me, chorus, to this history, who, prologue-like, your humble patience pray, Gently to hear, kindly to judge, our play. Now we can do, we can look at this play. Now I'll take my time in this play because my own personal assessment is that of the early plays, King John, Henry V, Richard II, and Richard III, that best of that life. This is an especially good play because he comes to grips with the idea here of what is a philosopher king? To what extent did this particular king come very close to becoming a philosopher king? Let us hypothesize about it. What values, what, what, what theories, what judgment you need to run straight? What is statecraft? You know what I mean? What is statecraft? That is what I'm going to deal with here. Let me illustrate what I mean by two references for you. All the big platonic hypotheses he mentions in this play, in fact, sometimes it's in a one line somewhere, you know, two lines somewhere else. Exeter, Act 2, Scene 4, Line 8. In passing, he says, uh, the law of nature and the law of nations. And nobody done that that thing. International law is the law of nations. And he's saying the king's claim is just by the law of nature and the law of nations. It has to be just by the law of nations. So therefore the law of nations must uh, satisfy the law of nature. Natural law by nature hmm, is the highest form of law. Not divine law, as Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas and Ockham and those guys believe. Natural law. It's important because there's a man named Grotius, who is, who is in my view, Dutchman. His name wasn't Grotius, but that's the Latin name he used to write. Them. Who you must understand, because he is, a, is alleged to be the founder of natural law. And there are a lot of starry eyed intellectuals out there with good. I'm a deal, I must, as an aside, to deal with good just here and now. How do men form a society? How does society form? Hypothesize. 
This is a goat which becomes relevant. Goat is, is in the category of Wuso, Lock, Hob, Goat is uh, in a category. Yeah. There are big differences between them, but they try to explain human association in the same way. Okay, I'll give you Let us suppose that man rules Red Africa or wherever, you know, Tilak says in the North Pole, conventional teaching says in Africa is the cradle of man, wherever. He was alone, and he was soon faced with the problem of starve or move, you know. Human being, he was eating leaves and the fruit, subject to seasonal change, hmm? And he wanted a more compact form of protein. The reason why meat eating became popular is because it's a more compact form of protein. The amount of protein you get from eating um, a salad, hmm? quantitatively speaking, you can't compare with the amount of protein you get from a piece of fish or meat. You know, you gotta eat a lot, a lot, a lot of salad to get the same amount. But uh, he found himself in a position where he had outlived. <coughs> the usefulness of the local he found himself. And if he stays there, he's going to starve in the habitat, and hence migration, right? And there's a big theory about that I, I can't go into now. But he became, he joined with others and became a big long word, you, know, you may know the word, I'll tell you it is transhuman. You heard the word? T-R-A-N-S-H-U-M-E-N-T, there's no bore there. Transhuman is like the Laplanders, you know? You move, you, you carry your own, your own meat in there, right? Eh? And you follow the herds. Like the buffalo, the Indians of the buffalo. Hmm? You, 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 you go where the food goes. You haven't learned sufficient to bring the food to yourself. You do, along the way you're going to domesticate and do other things. But at this stage you're transhuman. You're going where the food goes. Then from that you get domestic. Then some, some idiot one day, imagine that house, that you guys threw a skit over a horse, and the thing moved, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The big, those are the, somebody went in the lake, huh? and then did this to a log, and the log moved with him. So transportation, communications, discovered, wind power, water, all, all those advances are being made. The, the, the progress of man is based on technological innovation. An invention. It isn't based on accident. You know. And remember to all see that man only occupies two percent of the universe history. We're young. You know, we, we haven't been here a long time. We already have nuclear bombs, mind you. But only two percent of the world the world existed long before we were. You know. But the question is how did man come to live in society? Now, one opinion which taken is told is that hey, man discovered agriculture and you can domesticate animals. So there's no, no need to be transhuman and walk about the place. So you could settle down in one place, raise an air walking, you know, raise kids and form a city, a Jericho or one of those places. That's one view. But these other guys have a different view. And their, their view, which you must have known from your education, I hope, in school, is called social contract. Contract social, contract social. You know that. Well, According to Locke, man was living in idyllic, bucolic stupidity, you know. And he said, look, this is so nice, let us get together and form a state. According to Locke, they made two contracts. This is all invention. You can't prove it empirically. He speculates, see. He says, uh, the first pact was called Pactum Unionis, an agreement of union to get together and live in society. And the second agreement was pactum subjectionis. Having got together, you choose a man and he's the top dog. So says Locke. And that's his social contract. From that, consensus, consent of the governed, you know. He wasn't original with Locke, it's from Greek philosophy. Hobbes, he, he believed that man wasn't idyllic. Man was living in a damn jungle. Rat race. And man said, let us live in society and make a few rules to limit the amount of violence in the rat race. So Hobbes' idea is that it's a rat race otherwise, and he said, look, let's do a little detente. We can cross from poor ideologically 
but make a few rules just so we could survive. So, one is the rules, only one pack, no union, you can forbid one pack for the house and get an absolute rule. The best hunter, best whatever. Hence, Hobbes would support monarchy, absoluteness, and all that. See? That is his social contract. Uh, but you know Rousseau. If you don't know Rousseau, by now you have lived in America. The biggest joke I have is that uh, Mao Zedong like Rousseau. You, you know that? And so did uh, you, you like Jeremy Benson too. Right? Yeah. This guy, Vietnam Ho Chi Minh, who had lived in Paris, he liked uh, Rousseau. I'm Benton. Well, Rousseau, his, his only real contribution is to add to his social contract the idea of communauté, you know, a sort of communauté générale, a sort of, there's a contract, you underneath it, individually and corporately, a communauté générale, a general community will, which, which exists in society. And if your individual will comes against the communauté générale, then you must give way to the communication of our life. Majority, it means majority. The question is, is majority counting up as individuals? You know, can you really... Is, uh, is opinion to be numbered or weighed? Because 10 million people might feel yes. But the, but the, the essence and substance and the validity of the opinion might be negative. And 10 men might feel against the 10 million. Ten men might feel no, but there's more substance. You know, this is important because I tell you what happened to the Roman Empire. The Romans had a bad legal system. And they got into the same problem. They had five great jurists. Then Roman history played out. Paulus, Paul, Opinion, Orpian, Gaius, and Modestine. And they reached the stage, Diocletian and those guys, where how do you know what is the law? Because their system is different from the system of the And they passed a, a, a law that you went to these five jurists and these jurists only, and you number the opinions. If a majority said yes, that was the answer. If there was a tie, because some people didn't speak in some topics, then Paulus or Gaius, uh, they, they would, uh, not sorry, opinion and bias, they, they, they would, uh, you know, they numbered, that's the point I'm making, they numbered opinion. You go to the Supreme Court today, and you hear judges sit down there nine of them, and they decide your case and you count, five against four, you know. Well, you must ask yourself, whether the number, the arithmetical Pythagorean mysticism of numbers, is more important in your intellectual makeup than the essence of an opinion. For 300 years, Isaac Newton and his stupidity about apples from trees attracting the earth, action at a distance, which is, which is mystical, you know? Uh, Keane, you know, Maynard Keane, was given the right to open, open Newton's trunk in North Island. And when he opened the trunk, you know, the Catholic said, yeah. You found a lot of skulls and crossbones and candles. It's like the Putin. You know? So you can imagine, you can understand a guy like that believing in mysticism with actions across distance. You know? Point that I'm making is you can't number opinions or because something has held, birth makes this mistake in the revolution. Because Newtonism was popular for 300 years, deep, it must be right. You know? Longevity by itself doesn't make a, uh, give a thing validity. It's its consonance with natural law. So that, but all that was a digression from Rousseau. I have to get up to Grotius. Now, Grotius' big theme was international law. And he says, states arise, societies arise. See? Rome, France, France, you know. Remember, and he says, international law is based on express or implied pact agreement between states. 
you either express this kind of contract, a treaty, you know, man is a state versus state, you don't call it contract anymore, you call it a treaty, okay? It's the same damn thing. Um, so, or you don't sign one, but it's implied civilized behavior. Now that's important, because growth is found in modern international law, and his fundamental law, his Grundnorm, boy, another guy named Kelsey, the Pacta Sorwanda Sun, agreements must be obeyed. Yeah, who's going to enforce it? You know. so, who is the police power to enforce it? You know? Well, it's important to know what Grotius did because the essence of what the, the, the Shiite Muslims are doing is to say they don't, they don't agree with Grotius. Grotius' international law says that if you have an embassy, if America has an embassy in my country, where the embassy is, is America. It's legally America. And if we have an embassy in America, it's Guyana. And that's the embassy. That land and building is Guyana. Okay? So if you might have said the police and get into the place, they have to prove that they can take you to Guyana in my embassy. Okay? The law is alleged that you see the country that is clear about the uh, embassy. So that is why, for instance, you, you must read every now and then that somebody who is in your bosom and not an embassy stays there. And you can't, they can't get him. You know, and he's hoping to, it's beautiful how they plan operations. When they, when they do get a plane to bring them out, they make a, one or two diversions, you run there, you run there, but it kind of goes this way. Because when you leave the embassy back in, you know, you can be seen, right? But in there is in the embassy. So all that is good, but the, the, these Muslim guys are saying, hey, that's what Gorgeous and that is a Dutch one. The Gorgeous is Dutch, you know? That's what he said. But our enemy is America. And don't give me no shit. This is Persia, Iran. And don't tell me no crap that that building and that land is America. Why have I got to accept Gorgeous? And who would enforce it if I go in and see them anyhow? Who's the police? You see? There are some simplistic analogies made in international politics. One of them is about disarmament. I merely bring this to your attention. In civil society, there is general disarmament because the police are armed or have access to arms. So by and large, the vast majority of citizens walk without guns. By and large. Not New York. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But the important point is that the police are armed so you could disarm. But what if you disarm the international community? Who's going to be armed to, to uphold the peace? Hmm? That is the problem. You see, the United Nations and the League of Nations, the concepts came out of European history. It was a study by this guy in, in New Jersey here, Southern or Carolina guy. Wilson. And he said, look, these guys, they would meet these great countries in Congresses, Congress of Vienna, Berlin, you know, and they'll settle the world's problem. True. I mean, the Congress of Berlin said it's problem in Africa. No African attended. We divide up Africa. So the idea to have a general meeting of the important nations in one place to settle the world's problem is Wilson's idea. Hence the League of Nations, hence Roosevelt, uh, and these other things. But once again, having done that, and they form the court, they can carry disputes too, right? At the Hague, there is no police power. You see? There is no police power. So, the inefficacy of, of, of world groups like the UN and all that, and the inefficacy of Grotius's Pacta or Wildlife is the fact that there is no police power, no executive power to execute and enforce. No executive power. So what is the answer? Well, I, tell you, I can tell you the thinking of Plato and Shakespeare on this. Hmm? The city-state <coughs> is merely a temporary, well, merely a temporary form of government. Very important. Aristotle says, if you read Aristotle, that the highest form of human organization, city-state. Them town hall meetings down in <coughs> them scrap places that that moves in all those places, you know, in the villages. Oh, you get me 
campus Mahashu, sorry, and certain issues. Hey, he thought that's the highest form of human organization. But Plato believed in what he now called the negantropic idea, which in society grows and we move from the city state to the nation state. We are not going to stop here and ask yourself, this is an aside of mine, whether modern politics is not really involved with the question whether the nation state can any longer deal with human problems. I mean, what was Reagan's problem with terrorism? You know, if you, you couldn't prove it that Libya bombed the cafe. You could prove it Libya backed terrorists. Right? So you bombed Libya. But then some people say, but you're wrong. How do you know Libya is guilty? What will happen if Nicaragua bombed you because you claim country? You see? The truth is the nation state is no longer capable of handling modern problems. That goes to inflation and flights of capital, create deficits. It's the nation state at the moment, in my view, that is under attack. The tendencies toward bigger regionalism. EEC, ASEAN, hmm? CARICOM, the tendency is bigger grouping. If you had a bigger, look, let us pass it up. Let us forget the, 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 the emotional impoundment. 